Good morning, evening, or afternoon, whichever one's going on for you at this current point in time. Today, green means go because we're talking about gas. And no, I'm not talking about yours. I'm talking about the ones that goes in your van, your truck, or your car. Now, I've been doing an eight-month experiment where I've been using premium gas, specifically Shell's Nitro or V-Power Nitro Plus. Long name, but essentially that's their premium stuff, and it's supposed to clean up to 100% of the carbon buildup that's in your vehicle, giving you that new engine feel. I'm a little skeptical, but I'm hopeful. Maybe some people are getting a benefit out of it. Fantastic. But the original reason was because the owner of the 2009 Nissan Rogue, she was getting some oil around the boot of her ignition coil, as well as around the spark plug. That is not where oil should be. So apart from the engine seals being completely fine, the ones that go around the spark well that keep the oil from getting into the spark plug well, those are perfectly fine. And so, you know, if that's the case, hope that it's that because if it involves pulling the engine apart to fix the oil rings around your piston, picture the piston being here, compression ring, there's two rings, the compression ring at the top, the oil ring on the bottom, and that is supposed to keep the oil under that arm that lubricates the rest of the engine, keeps it away from the compression. If that's going wrong, chances are there's an issue there. I can report that as of using this time period, she has no more few or no more oil in her spark plug well, which may mean that there was some blow by caused by some carbon buildup on that ring that got fixed. Or you can say that maybe I just tightened them down a little extra. Who knows? I'm going to go with the carbon on this, but you're going to see the original third cylinder, which is where she had a misfire, followed by all four cylinders throughout the period. Now I'm going to you know, minimize this as much as possible. So you're only going to see maybe one month and then two months later, two months later, just so that we don't have to sit there and go through everything. I understand YouTube shorts and TikTok has ruined the world's ability to focus for more than a few seconds. Please watch the video, appreciate it and find out whether or not you're spending extra money on some nonsense. By the way, I'm not going to send the gas off to a lab to see you know, it, what it's made out of, what planet it comes from. And I'm also not going to make the little bottle that you put distilled water and shake it up and test how much ethanol exactly is in it. I could have done that, but you all don't really care. And given that your click away analytics when I check my channel says y'all click away after about three minutes tells me y'all wouldn't care anyways. So for the technical people out there, I'm sorry. For the quick people out there, here you go. So check out the videos, one through four of the cylinders. We'll see what's what, and we'll see whether or not the gas is worth it. Sound good? Follow me. Also, going to do some quick math. Some people say about 3,000 miles. Some people say about 2,000 miles is where you start seeing a difference. I decided to go with 2,500. The Rogue holds about 15 gallons of gas, and the fuel economy is roughly 22 for city miles, 27 for highway. So we went in the middle with 25 miles per gallon conservatively. So quick math. 25 times 15 gives us 375 divided by the 2500 for the sweet spot and we get about 6.666667 repeating and that just means six and two thirds of a tank is what we're going to need. So I round it up just for any loss that might be done by inefficient fuel injectors. We're talking about seven fill ups to get that 2500. It's all you need to know. So that's why it's taken eight months. It is what it is. That's why it takes this long. So we'll see what it is. Now you know the numbers. Let's go see the results. Now Shell says, hey, our formula helps with carbon deposits. It helps protect against corrosion. And it's supposed to do some good for wear and friction, especially for older cars. I understand most people are going to have GDIs or... Uh, direct injection engines, but regardless whether you have direct injection or multi-port, this is supposed to help with everybody, whether you have new car or old car and different types of injection systems. Some benefits, and they really hype this gas up, so let me know what you think. And just for peace of mind and for the sake of accuracy, I went to the same station and pumped the gas myself just to make sure that there were no questions about where the gas was coming from or which one was used. Here we have the third cylinder, which was the original misfiring cylinder back in 2023 in the summer. Here we have the top of the piston head and a little bit of rust, um, just some service stuff, just some moisture getting in. That's normal over 15 years. Around here, those circular 
valve heads, those circular points, we want to make sure that no carbon is building up around those seatings, making sure that the valve is able to fully close and fully open when the engine needs it to for the most optimized performance. So looking at the cross hatches from the sides of the, the walls of the piston, everything's looking okay. Or walls of the cylinder, I should say. Looking through those white spots are nice and clean little valve heads. But there's definitely some work to be done. Hopefully we can see this carbon start getting chewed away at as time goes by. Here we're four months later, which is roughly about four Phillips later, and that was the top of the first cylinder head. We're still in the first cylinder. We can see that the carbon that's up against that wall up there is starting to peel away, but still a lot of carbon left. You can see some weak spots where it's trying to eat through, but this carbon is really caked in there. Against the side, no issues with the wall of the cylinder. Definitely some soft spots where you can see the carbon is starting to kind of flake up or scale up and kind of fall off. But nothing miraculous. And certainly for $70 per fill-up, you kind of want to see results as soon as possible to kind of justify that cost. As far as the seals or the areas around where the valves open and close, those seem to be cleaner. Not miraculously like 10 out of 10, but something to note. Here we have cylinder two, and this one seems to have a little more carbon than cylinder one. Sidewalls look good. Depending on where you turn your car off, the valves can be in an open and closed position and at different heights. So if they're open, take that time to kind of peek in and see what's building up in the actual uh, shaft or opening. Moving forward, we can see definitely more buildup in between the two valves. So shell claims up to 100%. That, as of right now, does not look to be the case. Here we've got cylinder three once more. This is still four months later from the original video. And there are some spots. You can see that the carbon is a bit lighter in certain spots, but still heavy for the majority of it. I know just like me, you probably wanna believe that there's actually a difference being done here, but this carbon is so caked in here that even though it looks like it's working, it's just certain spots where the carbon hadn't clung yet. It is softening slightly, but this thing is still far from over. And here we have cylinder four. Again, lots of carbon, nothing has changed. Basically little softening and some cracks here and there, but the majority of the carbon has not moved whatsoever. So four fill ups in. I'm hoping for the best, but given that this experiment was eight months in, we're looking at about halfway mark and we've seen not much change. This is roughly two months after the four months, so six months total into the experiment. We're seeing that the carbon is lightening up in a lot of spots. There are some 
portions that are actually seeing the original color and a lot of carbon is starting to go from that dark black to almost like a pale gray. So we know we're on the right track and in certain portions it's actually chewed almost completely through the carbon, which is impressive, but still definitely not out of the woods yet. Here we're back with cylinder two. Everything's looking pretty light. Lights of lots of gray, lots of pale gray. A lot of the dark black spots are pretty much faded down. Now, of course, a lot of the lighter areas are also reflecting my light, so it's it's possible that it's also that it's not perfect, but. The surfaces around where those valves open are much cleaner, which is definitely good for your engine. Um, definitely needs more work. We are back with cylinder three, six months in. We can see some soft spots, but again, a lot of that carbon is just really on there. Now, I know through the car facts or the car history that she showed me, this was a rental in New York and in Massachusetts, and it had a previous owner before her. She's had this car for about five years, and we can see that a lot of that carbon is broken away, but I know New York drivers are another breed, so as far as maintenance and as far as uh, rough driving, you know, we're better, right? So we're looking at you know, about the same, a little bit less than where it was a couple months ago, but compared to how it was, honestly, anything is an improvement. Now, the question is, is that improvement worth $70 per fill-up or five per gallon for that matter? Once more at cylinder four, as you can see, we got some lighter spots. Again, the majority of the carbon is still there. Six months in, you can only help but be concerned, especially when, you know, you only got two more months to see some serious results. In between the two valves, it's lighter, but still dark, if that makes sense. <laughs> We can see that scaling or that flaking, so we know that that carbon's really starting to flake off, but that could be another month or two. And really, to get the type of results where we're talking about up to that 100% the shell is asking about or suggesting or advertising, we're talking about possibly being on this premium for years to really revive a car. And it would probably have to be, you know, getting on the highway, going 70, 80, maybe 90, just to really get that gas flowing. Because I promise you, seven tanks of just idling your car is not going to do it. It is currently February 11th as of making this video, and I took these videos yesterday on the 10th when I was so hopeful to see that there would be a huge difference. So this would be two months after the last clips you just saw. And I saw a little bit of surface rust. A lot of that surface carbon was gone. But I was very impressed to see that the carbon in a lot of areas was completely gone. Obviously, there is still plenty of carbon left. And I'm pretty sure that if she was to commit to being on this premium for <laughs> maybe three years... We could probably see some serious improvement, but I want to know what you guys think. Is this worth it? And the reason I ask is because $70 times eight months, we're looking at roughly 560 bucks, give or take, to have this achievement. Do you think this was worth it? More importantly, do you think this would be worth it for your vehicle? You can see a lot of streaks where that carbon has been eaten through. Very nice. Even the seating area 
where that valve goes is much cleaner. So just a quick 360 view and lots of that carbon is gone. Very nice. All right, final shot of cylinder two. Trying to do a quick 360 view. Lots of spots where the carbon is still there, but there are some areas where it's definitely either really lighter or much more gone. So it is having an effect to be clear. I'm not saying that this fuel is not working or that the it, it's supposed to have six times the cleaning agents of your regular gas, which is great. The issue is how long will it take really depends on your engine, how long you've been driving it, how long it's been maintenance for, and just, you know, so many conditions that really affect how much carbon builds up on your car over time. This was the main gremlin out of all the cylinders, and that was cylinder three. This is a final shot of that. Lots of that carbon is gone. Lots of pale, dry, old carbon that has mostly flaked off. Um, as far as where it started, very impressed. Lots of spots where definitely it ate through that really baked on carbon, but not 100% for sure. I'd say closer to maybe 45, 50% as of right here. So I would say probably another two years of dedication to regular driving with this, um, especially highway driving where you really get that, get the RPMs going and really get that injector injecting, you should see some serious results. Again, not everybody has the X amount of dollars that it would take to do that. So at your own risk, but not bad. And last, but certainly not least, the final shot of cylinder four. Lots of that flaking, lots of good clean spots. Unfortunately, not the 100%. I would have settled for even 80%, even 70 maybe, but... It definitely did do some cleaning, which long-term is good for your engine, don't get me wrong. And a lot of spots were definitely effective with cylinder four. However, you know, like I said, it's a real time commitment and a money commitment. So if that's something you're interested in and you really just want to see your engine really clean, go for it. At the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding. On the left, we have day one. On the right, we have the final day. So let me know whether you think the Differences are worth the effort, and is this the most efficient way of cleaning out carbon from your engine? Let me know whether you think it's worth it. So let me know, are you going to be buying premium gas for your car in the hopes of all the benefits that Shell claims, or are you sticking to that regular gas for that much cheaper price? Either way, have a good one, and until next time, work smart.